I'm down here to study the Falklands fritillary, the butterfly down here, and look at how we can ensure that it, it survives on the islands um, and you know, there is no immediate ex danger of it going extinct on the islands. Uh, and there is really only one that breeds on the Falkland Islands, which lives here uh, year-round, breeds here. There's so little known about it, and some of the work I'm doing, genetic work, is just really to establish what it is as much as, as, much as anything else. But I think it'll be something that's familiar to everybody from their childhood out in the countryside, just seeing these little bright orange flashes going around. It's what we're imagining here is, is um, an environment in which we've got butterflies laying eggs. So the first thing we're trying to do is find out what the environment's like in general. So this is a sort of portable weather station. It um, measures wind speed, wind direction and temperature. And this is to give us the overall kind of ambient uh, climate so that we can record that. So that's recording away quite happily. And. Uh, going on in the background so we can say yeah in general we've got a southwesterly air stream and it's this temperature and so on. Then what we've got here is let's imagine it's a lot of grazed land, a bit of stone but in the middle of it all we've got um, a plant, it's a dandelion but we'll pretend it's a violet and on this we've got caterpillars. So why out of anywhere around here have they chosen that particular plant? This is what we're trying to find out because we know what sort of uh, plant they're feeding on or what the conditions are then we're in some way to work out how we can make sure that environment still exists so that we can uh, so the butterfly can continue so we've got this which is a, a data logger that measures uh, again the temperature the same thing that the wind gauge will measure uh, on the surface and this measures the temperature um, however far you push it in under the soil so already we're starting to understand what, it, what what's special about this plant uh, by comparison with the overall environment. And then we've got these little chaps, which are uh, also a sort of data logger. And they measure temperature and they also measure light because quite often with fritillaries, they're very keen on an area that has a lot of direct sunlight. Um, so typically what we're looking at is an area around the plant that's much, much warmer than the surrounding environment. Let's imagine we've got egg, eggs on there. So again, we're looking at what's special about the plant. Um, and one of the things is what the nutri nutrition, uh, nutritional value for the plant is. So we'll be, I'll be taking a bit of leaf away to analyze. We'll be looking at the chlorophyll content of the plant. But also little things, temperature, as I said, very, is very important. So I've um, got this just a thermometer so we're looking at it and we're saying okay there we are there's our butterfly leaf what's special about that so we're shining the red light on it taking a surface temperature and we're recording that so basically everything that we can think of that could be measured is being measured because we're trying to find out what it is that's just distinctive about a particular plant in a particular location that's made a butterfly choose that from everything else to lay its eggs on um, and once we, the bigger understanding, the better understanding we get of that, the more likely we are to be able to conserve the butterfly. The interesting things about the Falklands butterfly will be the impact of agriculture and grazing, because it's very likely that it will actually depend on a reasonable level of grazing uh, for the violet plants it lives on to, to thrive. The way they live, the butterfly lives in small colonies uh, and the colonies are quite far apart. So if for any reason one of the colonies go extinct, then the question is, uh, can that colony be repopulated? 